Welcome to Understand the Math. This video is part of a series of videos on linear algebra and its applications and teaches you all about how to analyze the long-term behavior of a population that is modeled by a matrix. Be sure to check out the link below for free guided notes that you can highlight and fill in as you watch this video. In section 1.10 of this series, we looked at how difference equations can be used to model situations where changes occur in steps or what we can think of as discrete time intervals. A difference equation is an equation that can be written in the form x sub k plus one is equal to a times x sub k. A is called a transition matrix and x sub k contains information about the state of the system at time step k. In this video, we're gonna look at how to model a non-fatal disease using a transition matrix. We're gonna suppose that we're modeling a non-fatal disease where an individual is either susceptible, is infected, or has recovered and is susceptible again. Each day, 10% of individuals that are susceptible become infected, and 20% of individuals that are infected recover and become susceptible again. Let's now see how to find a transition matrix A that models the daily change in this population. Since individuals are either susceptible or infected, let's label the first and second columns of our matrix with S and I, and then the first and second rows with S and I. 10% of individuals that are susceptible become infected, so we put a point 0.1 in that entry, and then 20% of individuals that are infected recover and become susceptible again, so we have a point 0.2 in this entry. Since the number of individuals have to add up to 100%, we have a 0.9 in this entry and a 0.8 in this entry. Our matrix is a stochastic matrix where all the entries are non-negative and then each column sums to one so that the population ends up being 100%. We're now gonna use the transition matrix that we just created to analyze the long-term behavior of the population. The long-term growth rate of a population is given by the dominant eigenvalue that we'll call lambda one. The dominant eigenvalue is going to be the one with the largest magnitude. Our eigenvalue is the scalar lambda one in the equation a times x is equal to lambda one times x. If lambda one is greater than one, we can see from our equation that the population is going to grow because a times x, which is lambda one times x, is going to be greater than x. If lambda one is equal to one, the population is going to remain constant. And then when lambda one is between zero and one, our population is going to decay and become extinct. The long-term distribution of the population is gonna be determined by an eigenvector x sub one that corresponds to our dominant eigenvalue lambda sub one. If our eigenvalue x sub one is equal to a, b, for example, the long-term distribution is going to be one divided by a plus b, that's just the two entries added together, times x1. This formula tells us to find the long-term distribution, all you have to do is divide your eigenvalue x1 by the sum of its entries. The new entries will then add to one and can be viewed as percentages. Let's now use the transition matrix that we found on the previous page to determine the long-term growth rate and distribution of the population. Let's begin by finding the long-term growth rate. We can find lambda one by setting determinant a minus lambda i equal to zero. We have 0.9 minus lambda. Remember that we just subtract lambda off the main diagonal entries and then we have 0.8 minus lambda. We'll now multiply the main diagonal entries and we'll subtract off the off diagonal entries and that's gonna be equal to zero. Multiplying everything out, we have a lambda squared minus 1.7 lambda plus 0.72 minus 0.02 is equal to zero. This gives us lambda squared minus 1.7 lambda plus 0.7 is equal to zero. 
We can actually factor this without using the quadratic formula. And we have a lambda minus 0.7 and then a lambda minus 1. This gives us lambda is equal to 0.7 and lambda is equal to 1. The value lambda is equal to 1 is our largest eigenvalue, so it's our dominant eigenvalue, and we're going to label it as lambda 1. If we go back to our equation, a times x is equal to lambda 1 times x, and we plug in that our dominant eigenvalue is equal to 1, we see that a times x is equal to x, and that tells us in the long term our population does not change. The dominant eigenvalue for a stochastic matrix will always be 1 since the population in a stochastic matrix doesn't change. Let's now find the long-term distribution of our population. This will enable us in the long run to determine how many individuals are susceptible and then how many individuals are infected. To find the long-term distribution, we have to find the eigenvector, which we're going to call x1, that corresponds to our dominant eigenvalue, lambda 1. To find x1, we're going to take a minus lambda i, we're going to augment it with 0, and we're going to put it in reduced echelon form, and we're going to solve for x1. Let's make a note up here that our lambda 1 is equal to 1, so that's what we're going to be subtracting off the main diagonal. So we have a 0 0.9 minus 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.8 minus 1, and that's augmented with 0. This is equal to minus 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.2. You can see that our second row is a multiple of our first row, so that row is going to go to 0. And then we can take row 1 and multiply it by minus 10. This gives us the matrix 1 minus 2, and then everything else is equal to 0. Let's now let x1 be equal to x1, x2. And we can go up and let's circle our pivot. And that's going to tell us that x1 is equal to 2x2. We'll go back over to our vector and plug that in. So we end up with a 2x2 and an x2. We can pull the x2 out. And we have the vector 2, 1. To choose our eigenvector, we need to pick a value for x2. And to make things easy, I'm just going to let x2 equal 1. And that gives us the eigenvector x1 is equal to 2, 1. Our long-term distribution is going to be equal to 1 divided by the entries in x1 added together, so that's 2 plus 1, times x1, 2, 1. This gives us entries equal to 2 thirds and 1 third. This tells us that 2 thirds of the individuals in the long term are going to be susceptible and that one-third of the individuals are going to become infected. I hope that you now feel more comfortable in knowing how to use an eigenvalue and an eigenvector of a matrix to analyze the long-term behavior of a population. Be sure to check out the next video in this series where I'll teach you all about orthogonality. If this video has been helpful to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. Keep believing in yourself and have a great rest of your day.